you're in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, National Insurance Columnist and Financial Color Commentator. And today and all this week on The Biz, it's September, Life Insurance Awareness Month. And today, The Underinsured Among Us with number one author and industry speaker, Tom Hagner. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I am your host, Steve Savant, and we're broadcasting live to a nationwide audience of financial professionals right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain. And today with me, Paychecks and Playchecks author, number one on Amazon.com on retirement, Tom Hagna. Welcome to our show, Tom. Thanks, Steve. Great to be back. I'm glad to have you back. We had huge response when you were back on our show the first time. We're doing all this month. It's life insurance our wheelhouse. We right. love life insurance. And let me tell you, if I couldn't sell anything else, this product still can do so much more than any other product that I know, broad-based financial ideas. Absolutely, Steve. And, and the opportunity is incredible because fewer people own life insurance. There are fewer life insurance agents than ever. And I think our advisors have a tremendous opportunity. I, I'm stunned by you when you say that because I can't believe, you know, life insurance has been in the United States since 1759. The Presbyterian Senate came up, they put together their own insurance company. We had our first mutual company, the Venerable New England in 1850. We've been around for a long time in the United States. And how can we have people unaware, and more than that, on an underinsured or not insured at all? Let me just read some statistics to you from LIMRA. 41% of Americans, 95 million people have no life insurance, none. 40% uh, of married couples only have the group insurance that they have at work. 61% of men and 57% of women uh, are the only ones that have life insurance. The others do not have life insurance. And so you're, you're talking mm. about huge numbers of Americans that, are, mm. that have no life insurance. And think of the tragedies that will happen in those families. I mean, if, mm. if times are tough now, what happens when the income disappears mm. uh, forever? I mean, it, it, we're talking major tragedies. Well, when I'm considering term insurance, even if it was just term, even if it was just term insurance, it is so cheap. We're micromanaging every health category, super preferred, preferred plus, preferred, standard plus, and standard before we even get into substandard underwriting. So we're parsing everybody's urine and blood. All this is coming out because we're living longer. The price tag has come down. So there's really no reason not to have at the bottom end at least a term contract to cover not only my liabilities, but my future earning power, which we're going to get into later on in the week. We're going to talk about this. You'll not want to miss any of our shows. Tom's going to be with us all this week, and we're going to talk about earning power. And believe you me, that could be a major play for sales. Yeah. Let, let me go over why people are so underinsured. Um, people don't realize in this 1% interest rate environment how underinsured they are. Mm -hmm. Think about this. How much life insurance do you need in a 1% interest rate environment to protect $50,000 of income? Steve, you need $5 million. $5 million at 1% interest will produce $50,000 of income. Now, how many people do you know that make $50,000 have $5 million worth of life insurance? Well, two, two thoughts. That number is unbelievably, astonishingly large. And number two, would and a carrier actually give us that? Would they actually give us five million because well, it's a one percent okay. environment? I do that. I do that kind of for effect. And so mm -hmm. then I say, how much life insurance do you need in a five percent interest rate environment? Because that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Five percent interest sure. rate environment to pr protect fifty thousand of income, one million. Mm -hmm. So I say, let's start there. What if we went through our books of business and made sure that every one of our clients had a million dollars of life insurance for every fifty thousand they had in mm -hmm. income? See, then they would be somewhat protected. Mm -hmm. The one percent people say, Tom you're crazy, but at 5%, I'm not mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. And so I would say $1 million to protect every 50,000 of income would be a great start. And if all of the advisors would do that, people would be very well protected and the advisors would be doing very well as well. Well, when I think about the, the market now, in fact, actually, I think the, the league leading five-year lockdown annuity rate right now fixed is 3.1 at this date. Remember, always check in with us before you go ahead and make a quote. So I'm at 3% at five-year. I think I could get a 3.7 on a 10-year. So even at 3% lock, trying to take care of my $50,000 earned income. I mean, it's still, that's a death benefit. And, and I guess my question is, is, if Americans actually figured this out, that I not only have regular liabilities and debt that I rang up, whether it's mortgage or short-term debt or auto or long-term issues, commitments to my kids for education and all these things, I'm now talking about my earning power, which again, when we get into this later on in the week, we're gonna really unpack this. But I guess my question to you is, when you see these numbers, 
and the education. I thought we've been educating the public. And now we're doing Life Insurance Awareness Month. What can we do as professionals to bring this into the marketplace and have people really listen to us, the consumer really yeah. understand what we're saying? Okay, so so one of my best pieces of advice is, is, is to get involved in this Life Insurance Awareness Month. If you go to lifehappens.org, lifehappens.org is the Life Foundation website. And I just went on there just to try to give some you know, some tips to, mm -hmm. to your advisors. And I was shocked by how much stuff they have to help advisors mm -hmm. bring it to the, to the consumers. They have advertising campaigns. They have a direct mail marketing mm -hmm. campaign. They have sales brochures with third party resources that bring to, to light mm -hmm. many of the things we talked about. Real life stories, both in print and DVD. Free downloadable flyers that, that advisors can well, use with, with, with prospects. Who is lifehappens.org, Tom? That, that's the Life Foundation. Um, it, it's really Mar Feldman, who's the son of Ben Feldman, the infamous mm. Ben Feldman. And this is part of Ben Feldman's legacy is this Life Foundation and, and Marv Feldman is a CEO. And, and they're the ones that really started this whole Life Insurance Awareness mm -hmm. Month. So it really started from the Life Foundation. Mm -hmm. They have 60 second TV commercials with Cake Boss Buddy Velastro. So Cake Boss Buddy Velastro is the spokesperson for Life Insurance Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know his story, um, most people know him, they've watched him on TV. But when he was 17, on his 17th birthday, his father was diagnosed with cancer and died within just uh, within a few weeks or a few months. And uh, and that meant 12 to 18 hour work day, six days a week. All of a sudden, Buddy had to step in and supervise 30 employees. And so mm -hmm. Buddy knows firsthand what the lack of life insurance mm -hmm. did to his family. And so he's the spokesperson. Mm -hmm. But they've even got social media where they'll do the tweets for you. They have postings wow. for your for your LinkedIn and, and your Facebook. They, you can embed life videos into your website. So what I'm saying is, if they go to lifehappens.org, mm -hmm. there's a, just a whole amount of material that they can use. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk more, not only on lifehappens.org, but more about his book. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Companies in our business are always touting service, products, and underwriting. And we do that too. But here's the difference. Now enter the world of the elite producer with a value package that cuts us out of the pack, a BD that approves social media marketing of non-FINRA products and doesn't take an override. With the best competition desk in the industry, and for our loyal producers, a true group health plan. No one offers that. Brokers Alliance does. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant, your host. We're with MDRT speaker and platform speaker and author, Tom Hagna. Tom, I'm talking about uh, all these things we're talking about for Life Insurance Awareness Month. I just want to be able to make sure that, listen, if you write a case, let's just do that. Sure. If you write a case with Brokers Alliance and you put in the remarks or the memo pack, hey, I saw that show and you're, this is your first case, you write that and we'll give you Tom's book. Paychecks and Playchecks, and you'll really appreciate what you read inside this. And on top of that, we'll send you all our shows. We'll just give you the links and send it to you absolutely free. So I just want to make sure that you're always up to snuff of what's going on. And again, one of the sites that Tommy brought up, which was lifehappens.org. I think you'll find a lot of great information there and a lot of help for your practice. When we're talking about people's practices, yep. we're talking about Life Insurance Awareness Month. I just want an appointment. How do I get an appointment? Well, okay. So, so you, let's say you got the appointment, all right, mm -hmm. and, and you're on the appointment and you're sitting down with the husband and wife and, and um, they say, well, we're fine, Steve, because he's got $200,000 at work. See, most people think that their coverage at work, that, that's all they need and they're fine. Mm -hmm. What I want everybody to know is they're not fine. They're not fine. $200,000 uh, is not going to provide adequate income. So here's a technique that I used uh, when I was a producer. If somebody said, oh, Tom, we're fine. He's got $200,000 of work. I would look at the husband and I'd say, bang, you just got hit by a drunk driver. You're going to be dead for the next five minutes. See, nobody thinks they're going to die. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to take them out on the appointment. I'd say, bang, you just got hit by a drunk driver. You're going to be dead for the next five minutes. Now I talk to the spouse and I say, you just said you're fine. So here's what's going to happen. When he dies, you know, you're going to get $200,000. You're going to call me at 1% interest. $200,000 is going to give you less than $200 a month. 
Now the kids are playing over here. And I say, now what I want you to do is tell the kids, I'm going to stay out of it. Just tell the kids that everything's going to be okay, that mommy's going to be fine on $200 a month. Well, the fact is mommy isn't going to be fine. At 5% interest, you're going to get less than $1,000 a month. So tell the kids that mommy's going to be okay uh, on $1,000 a month. See, they're not fine. Mm -hmm. and, and this really came to light when I read another book. Uh, this is a book uh, by Joe Jordan. He's a friend mm -hmm. of mine. He's an MDRT speaker. He wrote a book called Living a Life of Significance. And Joe's book is, uh, I'll just summarize it. Joe's dad was a very powerful man. He was an advisor to Harry Truman. But three weeks before his dad died, he cashed out all his life insurance. Mm -hmm. Joe's book takes over from there. His mom had to sell everything. She had four little kids. She had to have two jobs just to put the kids, uh, just to put food on the table. When it came to college, she couldn't put all the kids through college, just the boys, not the girls. And Joe's book talks about brother-sister relationships. And Joe's book is really a cry out, where was my dad's financial advisor? How could he do this to us? And so what I want to say, Steve, is that when, when an advisor is on an appointment, their number one obligation is to stick up for those kids. Mm -hmm. You know, and if, if they would just recommend a million dollars of life insurance for every 50000 of income, these types of tragedies wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody's going to buy. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going to buy, but we've got to recommend. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, you know, we may even have some really, I mean, fiduciary liability on this, not to bring up these kind of issues, which again, uh, being an advocate for the children, being an advocate for the single mother, Absolutely. all those issues I want to be able to bring to the table because we have, I think, a responsibility and a stewardship as professionals, especially insurance professionals, to bring these things to the table. We can't make everybody write a check, no. but we can at least inform everybody. Right. And, and like, if we really do care about our clients, and I think most advisors mm -hmm. truly care about their clients, if you really do care about somebody, how could you allow a tragedy to happen if something bad happened? Like, I wouldn't want that in my book of business. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't stop everybody, and not everybody's going to buy life insurance, mm -hmm. but I can ensure that I'm recommending mm -hmm. just solid recommendation mm -hmm. every single appointment that in our practice, we recommend that you have at least a million dollars worth of life insurance for every 50000 in income. That's the least we can do. Now, I've noticed that, that actually carriers have become a little bit more benevolent once you get past the liabilities of debt and mortgage and things of that nature and future obligations to education and so forth, they're pretty good about earning power, 10 times, 15 times earnings. So it's much more flexible than it used to be. Yeah, and you know, I think if you put in the remarks section that we're in a low interest rate environment and, and you know, I think sometimes we've mm -hmm. got to educate the underwriters that, mm -hmm. that in a 1% interest rate environment, it takes 5 million to protect 50,000. Right. Now they're not probably going to go that far, but um, mm -hmm. you know, I always, when I wrote things to underwriters, I always felt I was a little Hans Christian Anderson, you know, <laughs> I had to write a little story and, oh, and, yeah. and I found if I put, if I really put a face on the people right. and wrote a story that I, I would get good input back mm -hmm. from the underwriters. I'm so surprised, you just brought up a key issue. I'm so surprised surprised at what a paragraph or two will do to steer the underwriter and especially Absolutely. when you're bringing up what I call not only financial I mean, I'm just looking at the financial timeline I just did the math here's the answer do you have a contrary po opinion right. but then having them and I've never thought about this until you just said this but I thought man I think I'll take a picture of the I'll take a picture of the family and send it in with the app right I mean think about that I mean you, we got a cell phone right now we can do all this modern uh, technology I can do it right then and there so my, my issue though is I really think these are facts that we have to bring out all this week Tom we Absolutely. have to talk about it all this week we're going to be talking about life insurance before we cut out of the show, give me one more idea here that you're talking about from a facts of life point of view. Do you got any stats or anything that just kind of bothers Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, again, this is from Life Foundation. You know, 70% of all adults agree that they personally need life insurance, and yet, you know, as we said, only about 61% of them actually have it. Mm -hmm. um, four in 10 households with children under the age of 18 said they would immediately have trouble meeting everyday living expenses if the primary wage earner died. I mean, think about that. So they know that if, if the wages went away, how could they live? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've got to protect it, at least with term mm -hmm. insurance. I mean, you know, eventually I say death is a permanent problem. It's not a temporary problem. True. So, you know, uh, and less than 1% of term policies ever pay a death mm -hmm. claim, but we've got to get the coverage on them. It's true. And we're going to just exhort you all this week because it's Life Insurance Awareness Month. We're just going to keep pushing this in front of you because we believe in so strongly in bringing this to our client base. Well, listen, you can watch this show and all our shows at www.brokersalliance.com. As soon as you come on our homepage, hit the red on-demand video button. That's the buzz on the biz for today. You've been in the zone, the business insurance zone. The biz is brought to you by Brokers Alliance, a national leader in insurance products, support services, and educational workshops.
When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.